Hi, welcome back. Welcome to Insect Pests of Crops lecture series. Under the lecture four, we'll be covering the pests of sorghum, one of the widely grown crop throughout the world. So, in fact, sorghum is infested with you no know, very important bora pests, which includes shoot fly, Atherigona species, which includes Atherigona saccata, Atherigona nutvi, Atherigona approximata, pink stem borer, Sesamia inference, white stem borer, Chylopartilus. In fact, all these three borer pests you now infest in the similar way, the way they infest mice. They have got similar biology here also. Yens, yes, these three pests have been covered already under the pests of mice. So I'm not going to you know, talk about these three borer pests. Okay, so I'll be giving the link below the class which, have, which has been already you know, completed under the pests of mice. Okay, so these three pests are covered under the mice. So we'll be moving to sucking and erect pests of sorghum, which includes shoot bug, Peregrinus maidis, Delphacidae, erect bug, Calocoris angustatus, Miridae, sorghum midge, Stenodiplosis, Sargicola, Cecidomidae, aphids, Propolosipum maidis, Aphididae, gram caterpillar, Illicorpa armigera, Noctuidae, white mite, Polygonicus indicus, Tetanicidae. So once now we complete this, we'll also discuss about IPM of sorghum pests. Okay, to start with, shoot bug, Peregrinus maizis. This pest, in fact, has got a preferred host like sorghum, maize, and ditch grass. Whereas sugarcane and grasses are also infested. Okay, so and this insect is widely distributed wherever sorghum is grown. You can see here, almost all the continents, wherever sorghum is grown. So this insect is a very serious pest there. So the nature of damage includes both nymphs and adults. Sucks the sap by congregating on leaves, okay, leaf whorls, and within the inner side of leaf sheath, as well as aerids, and as well as the exposed roots. So that means almost all the parts are attacked by this insect and wherever they are there, they continuously suck the sap. Okay, so nymphs, adults, you can see this Macropterus farm, like Nila Parvata lugens, okay, brown, plant tapara paddy. So here also we'll find both Brachypterus and Macropterus farms. And you can see the large number of nymphs congregate on the different parts of the plant and sucks the juice. Okay, so the symptoms includes plants become unhealthy because of the continuous sucking, the growth gets stunted and they turn yellow. Okay, and the panicle formation is inhibited because of the, you now vigor of the plant is affected, the panicle formation is inhibited. The leaves, in fact, wither from tip downwards. Okay, the overall growth of the plant. In fact, the plant actually represent sickly appearance. Okay, so the honeydew is also secreted by these bugs and that attracts the ants. You can see here. So the large number of nymphs and adults secretes this honeydew as well, wherever they are there. And they are actually you no know, sooty mode grows. And these you know, bugs are also tended by these ants. So the midrib of the leaves turns red. Okay, due to egg laying activity. The ovipositing activity also leads to reddening of the midribs. So you can see here. So overall, the because of the damage of these insects, wherever they are there, so the completely inhibit the growth of the plant and ultimately affect the yield. So in addition to the direct damage, they also transmit two important virus okay, throughout the world, which is called mice mosaic virus and mice stripe virus. Among these two, mice mosaic virus is widely and very prevalent in India. So the symptoms of this mice mosaic virus includes stunted growth of the plant. And also typically we'll also see the fine chlorotic lines on the leaves. So these are the very important symptoms which is exhibited by the plants infected with mice mosaic virus. So if you look at the biology of peregrinus mites, eggs are inserted into the midrib and that portion is covered with waxy substance. You can see the early stars, which are cream colored and later they turn into grayish colored and you'll find these Macropterus farms. Okay, both Macropterus and Brachypterus farms are found. Macropterus farms are actually you know, generally found whenever they're actually you know, need to migrate to other fields and colonize the newer fields. So if you look at the management, Conserve the natural enemies such as ladybird beetle, Coccinella, Septum punctata, and Menaculus sex maculatus. And spray with dimethylate or pasumitan or melathion at the rate of 250 no, ml in 450 to 500 liters of water. That means it requires about 2 ml per liter of water. In fact, no, the 
poor understanding of ecology of these insects leads to non development of ipm strategies so that's why more or less we are depending on the insecticides for the management of this peregrinus maidis so coming to second pest ear red bug calaporis angustatus and the worst on which this insect occurs are sorghum mainly pern millet maize fox tail millet sugar cane and other wild grasses and this insect is mostly endemic to southern states like andhra pradesh karnataka and tamil nadu and where this sorghum is grown and the, if you look at the nature of damage both nymphs and rats actually suck the juice from the grains when they are in the milky stage of the crop okay in the manic panical stage okay so they you know, suck the juice as a result of that the the individual grains actually shrink and turn black and become ill filled or chaffy okay so if you look at the entire panicle you will find a few of these grains are infested with this insect okay so damage in fact from milky stage it extend up to yet duff stage and wherever these nymphs and adults actually suck the juice from the you know, grains those parts actually turn brownish and you can typically find the feeding punctures on these grains if you look at the life history of ear red bug so eggs are cigar shaped and it is actually open at an anterior end you can see here it's usually they are inserted into the leaf tissues and it undergoes five instars you can see the growth first second third instar fourth instar you will find these you no know, wing buds and which are very clear in the fifth instar and it becomes adult okay so the, for this completion of these five nymphal instars it takes about you no know, 10 to 17 days and adult is usually yellowish green bug measures about 5 to 8 mm very small and it lays about 57 to 267 eggs so if you look at the management again we are depending on the insecticides for the management of ear red bugs as well melathion dusting at the rate of 25 kg per hectare or fenval rate find 4% dp at the rate of 10 kg synchronizing during milky stage so this is the time it needs to be applied and it may yet to be repeated depending on the incidence so on third and eighth day after emergence of panicles so these insecticides may be dusted on the panicles the third pest which we are concentrating are sorghum midge sorghum midge stenodiplosis sargicola belongs to family cestomida that is gall midge so previously it was known as cantarinia sargicola and it was now now it's called stenodiplosis sargicola host plants includes sorghum both grain and forage sorghum wild grasses columbus grass jansen grass sudan grass and again so this insect is also widely distributed wherever sorghum is grown okay so all the continents in fact so in fact this insect attacks developing grains the maggots develop by feeding inside the grains so xr now with the help of well developed ovipositor it actually lays the eggs inside the developing grains and the hatched maggots actually start feeding on the inner content of the grain okay so during serious infestation the entire ear may appear blighted or blasted okay because of the feeding activity of the maggots you can see here the blighted appearance of the infested grains other healthy grains you can see here normally okay so ear reds are divided up grains and during severe attack may appear blighted is the characteristic symptom of damage of stenodiplosis sargicola so worldwide you can see here the midge is infested estimated to destroy 10 to 15% of the sorghum grown so that much serious it is you can see the large number of midges now waiting to lay the eggs okay and so you can see the blighted appearance represented by the panicle okay so if you look at the life history with the help of long ovipositor you can see here this midge which is now about 2 mm very small pinkish colored with a long telescopic ovipositor it actually inserts its eggs into the developing glumes and egg period takes about 2 to 3 days and the early instars okay are white colored and later they turn orange and which is actually spindle shaped okay so they feed the inner content of the grains and the pupa actually move out move to the edge of the you know grain tip of the glume and 3 days before the adult emergence within before 3 days the pupa moves and you can typically find the pupal cases from which adults emerge okay very characteristic in fact so the larval stage the maggot stage is about 10 days within which actually it feeds and causes damage if you look at the management of stenodiplosis sargicola so for this insect in fact ipm strategies have been developed cultural control includes plant early to avoid any heavy infestation that means okay so synchronous sowing is actually very much important to avoid the now 
further spread once the the initial fields are infested they complete the life cycle and move to the neighboring fields the late sown or staggered sown crop so remove wild grasses from within around the field okay so there are a number of grasses like jansen grass may be found on the burns or nearby fields so such wild grasses needs to be destroyed so do not plant sorghum continuously on the same land okay so rotate with crops like sugarcane or peanuts intercropping with legumes may also be beneficial so that reduces the incidence of arid mite so very important cultural practice is actually growing you know hybrid or resistant varieties okay which especially the resistant hybrids so important varieties which have been released so in india from the you know well known icrisat institute is icsv 197 745 843 880 13 Eight eight zero three two. So wherever they are actually, this insect is very serious. So such resistant varieties may be no used. So usually these varieties do not tiller. Say they do not produce side shoot. Okay, so such no varieties should be selected. So if you look at the chemical control strategies, so these insecticide like Malathion dusting, twenty five kg per hectare, or Pozzolan twenty five kg per hectare, or Fenwell rate at the rate of ten kg per hectare can be no dusted during the milky stage of the crop. so another pest which occurs usually in the later season of the crop is aphids rapalus saipam maidis so they are yellowish with the dark green colored so in this insect is in fact also infest the mice so because of the continuous acting continuous sucking activity of both insect and adults and also the release of the anidu which actually covers the plant surface no leading to growth of sooty mold yellowish no leaves actually turns yellowish and the vigor and vitality of the plant is actually affected you can see the no oh, thousands of these aphids okay sucking on the plant parts especially they remain the leaf sheath and the surface of leaves and sucks the juice so gram caterpillar helicor parmigera in fact no it has got more than no oh, 100 words so sorghum is also one of them it typically no it attacks the no economically important no part of the plant panicle so they may remain within those no Oh, no panicles and uh, no feed on the grains like this you can see here no irregular cutting up those grains so adults may found on the various part of the plant no preferably if the panicles is there they may lay the eggs individually on the grains itself and early start start feeding on the no the grains and in fact we may discuss about these insect no integrated pest management of helicor parmigera on, on various different crops as well so here in this case so no the very important management practice which we can target in case of sorghum is use of npv which is very effective especially against the early instars okay so npv can be used you can see very typical infection of npv on il corpa so what we can do we can use the 250 lead le of you know uh, ha npv and spray along with the you no know, uh, gar this one the jaggery jaggery solution so that you no know, it binds and it is become very effective effective in fact the leaf mite or white mite which is also called zoar mite oligonica syndicus again it is also you no know, has got wide host range like zoar sugarcane maize ragi bajra arecanut etc so both nymphs and adults actually suck the juice and as a result of that you can see a reddish appearance it is in fact in sugar cane and typically you'll also find similar type of symptoms on the sorghum maize as well okay so feeding by this may might results in leaf turn reddish which increases with a increase in attack so entire leaves turn red in the severely affected plants so and they later dry so you can see the different stages of you no know, this oligonicus indicus so in order to manage these no oligonicus indicus in case of sorghum you can spray acaricides like wettable sulfur or pozzolan at the rate of 2.5 g per liter if it is wettable sulfur or 2 ml per liter if it is pozzolan okay so these are the important pests which infest the sorghum if you look at the integrated pest management like cultural methods complete the sorghum so no sowing of sorghum as short time as possible that means no we need to go for synchronized sowing so that there will be uniform same time flowering occurs in that particular area so that we can reduce the damage of mids as well as the aerid bug okay so staggered sowing in that particular area is always problematic take a early sowing of sorghum immediately after the receipt of south west or northeast monsoon to minimize the shoot fly incidence especially okay in the 
years of rain, rainfall usually you no know, shoot tree incidence increases so very important practice is actually you no know, intercropping with lab lab or cowpea which minimizes the stem borer incidence especially kylopartilla as well as the sesame and friends use incre increased seed rate at the rate of 12.5 kg per hectare okay to remove shoot fly damage okay so this is very important practice targeted against the shoot fly impact but it is also beneficial for you no know, stem borers as well mechanical methods set up light traps till midnight to monitor and attract kill adults of stem borer crane mids as well as the aerate caterpillars set up sex pheromone traps at the rate of 12 per hectare to attract male moths of helicarpa armigera from flowering to crane ordering stage as no oh, helicarpa mainly attacks the sorghum crop in the panicle stage set up fish meal trap at the rate of 12 per hectare to attract shoot fly adults especially from 7 to 30th day chemical control strategies so use seed pelleted with insecticides seed coating is very important especially for shoot fly which we have discussed in case of maize so two oral application of 4% cart of hydrochloric granules are carbofran granules can be done so at the rate of 5 kg per hectare if it is at the no 25 to 35 days if the incidence increases especially the borer pests okay so we can go for once again the second time application at the rate of 10 kg per hectare so oral application can be done for flower and ear it pests you can go for no application of dusting especially with the melathion fozolan or phenol rate okay so this is actually the complete ipm strategy for sorghum so biological methods wherever helicarpa damage is there especially so as i was telling so npv is very effective against the early instars we can go for now npv application at the rate of 250 le per hectare crude sugar at 2.5 kg cotton seed kernel powder at the rate of 250 g this has to be mixed and applied during evening hours okay so that you know it will be it is in fact npv is very susceptible to the sun sun rays and it re reduces the no infectivity of npv so that's why npv has to be applied during evening hours and spray on the aerates to reduce the larval population of helicarpa so you can see the no oh, npv infected larvae so i lend this no lecture number 4 the pests of sorghum with few questions what are the mandate crops of ecrisat in fact no ecrisat has done lot of research with respect to no sorghum crop against which pests of sorghum will go for increased seed rate okay so list the serious storage pests of sorghum in fact which you have not covered in this lecture but then now in one of the future classes i'll be covering this but now we can go through the important pests of sorghum especially in the storage condition thank you thank you very much if there are any questions you can now uh, post below and uh, or you can email me as well thank you thank you very much